Hi, I'm Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker, and today I'm going to answer a question that a lot of people frequently ask me, and that is, what is New Horizons going to do now? Well, for the next year and a half or so, we have a pretty good answer. They're going to be downloading all of the telemetry that they collected from the flyby of uh, 2014 and U69, commonly nicknamed Ultima Thule. But then what? Well, they still have a perfectly good spacecraft. It's out there in a region that we haven't really explored a whole lot. In theory, they should be able to find something else. They've gone about hmm, halfway or so through the Kuiper Belt. So it's entirely possible they could find a new target and be able to use it there. But the problem is, how are they actually going to find one of these new targets? In order to even find MU69, they had to get special time on the Hubble Space Telescope. And that is really becoming difficult to get any kind of special time on. So they're starting to think, well, what else could we do? Well, there's only two possibilities. One is to use Hubble. No other Earth-based telescope can actually image it. But the second one is to use an instrument that's already on New Horizons. And with that, they might be able to see one of these objects a little bit sooner than trying to rely off of ground-based measurements. They could use the LORI camera, the long-range reconnaissance imager, and try to take some images to see what's going on. As it was, they were able to take an image of 2014 MU69 in about four months-ish before its close approach. And they used that information to better target them in towards the target. Now, could they have done it earlier? Almost certainly. They really were in a period of hibernation during this time period, so they weren't able to do all of the imaging that they might want. They wanted to preserve the health of the spacecraft for when it flew by MU-69. But they still could theoretically find something. Now, how would they do this? Well, the way they did it with Hubble is to take a whole bunch of images, pointed at one point in the sky, and to look and see what was moving between these images. Could they do the same type of thing with Lori? Well, the problem is, is downloading an image takes a really, really long time. About four to eight hours per image. And quite frankly, they just don't have the bandwidth to support downloading these really, really large images all the time. But they don't really need to download every single image. What they could do instead is point the camera Take an image that takes about eh, a couple minutes where it's pointed in the same direction using a very steady exposure. And then they could use multiple of these images and combine them together into some kind of way. The ultimate product of these images that they already took with Lori is an image that looks like this. It, you can pretty clearly see that they've subtracted out the stars. Now, how did they do that? Well, Essentially, you're trying to point the camera in exactly the same direction. You're not going to be perfect every time. And you can see some of the little uncertainties that are surrounding it. That's a result of them not being perfect. But then what? Well, they can figure out exactly where the spacecraft was, and they can adjust the images virtually to be able to compensate for the movement, and so they can subtract out the background better. There's some other things, too, that they should keep track of. For instance, the Distance isn't perfectly linear. All kinds of cameras have some kind of a fisheye effect. Now, fisheye lenses are made to exacerbate this so that you have this kind of round world type feel. Most of the really, really high zoom cameras don't have a whole lot of this and they can kind of correct for it. But they already have this really well characterized so they can correct for that a little bit. And by doing this image processing on the spacecraft, they can reduce the number of images they send down drastically. They could take 50 images of a single spot, be able to combine them all together, send down that one image, and they could kind of see the track going through the image that would be another object of some interest. And they might even be able to get away without sending any images eventually, just looking for these moving objects that are on there. The spacecraft is theoretically perfectly capable of doing this kind of thing, so who knows what will actually end up happening. Now, 
when could they actually do this? And that's a little bit trickier. See, the priority right now is for them to collect all of that science data. We know that New Horizons had the flyby of Pluto in 2015. And it took them, what, three and a half years or so to make it halfway through the Kuiper Belt. They had to make the corrections to get to this object very, very shortly after the Pluto encounter. But they had already found the object the year before, so it was relatively easy. And they made some fine tuning as they got closer to allow them to fly by. Keep in mind that we only saw Ultima Thule from New Horizons a few months before. Not the three years that we would need to make the course correction. So what do we do from here? Well, they still do have a sizable amount of fuel, so it's entirely possible that they can find something else of some interest. And they should absolutely search for it. But they're going to start running out through the Kuiper Belt, and once you get beyond the Kuiper Belt, there's not really a whole lot of objects that are expected to be out there until you get to the very, very distant Oort Cloud. And quite frankly, New Horizons probably won't last that long. We don't have any spacecraft that have made it that far, not even the two Voyagers that have gone to the outskirts of the solar system, leaving the heliosphere. Who knows what will happen, though. I suspect, though, that they're trying to write the software right now. They already have the concept for the software tested because they've done this on the ground. They have to convert that into code that the spacecraft can actually do. They have to test this code on the ground, make sure it works, and then upload it to the spacecraft. Depending on how risky this is, they might be able to upload it while they're still downloading the data. If it's just like an application, if it's an app update. But if it requires an entire operating system, which it might, depending on how they wrote it, it could potentially wipe the data from the New Horizons account, and there is no way that NASA would want to risk that until they get every scrap of data down from that mission. What will we end up seeing? Well, I don't know. I really hope that the New Horizons team can find another target. It'd be really cool to see and compare some of the other Kuiper Belt objects that are in the area and see if they have this really unusual double pancake structure or maybe they'll find something else entirely different. Who knows? I'm really excited though to figure it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Let me know what you think they'll do with New Horizon. Maybe they'll just use it to take a picture of Earth like they did with the Voyager cameras when they were out in the distant parts of the solar system. Who knows? But thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.